Professor David Schultz himself is just back from the Middle East and is joining us now thank to you. talk about the Comey firing as well as the issues with the legislature. So thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. All right. You just came back from Israel. Let me ask you, in advance of the president's trip, was the Comey firing a big deal there and what was the reaction to it? Well, yes, it was a big, a big deal, as is, I would say, in general, sort of the Trump administration, because obviously the United States is the biggest ally of Israel. And the people I talked to, including some people, you know, who are, you know, reasonably high up over there, um, are confused, as many Americans are, regarding what's the overall grand strategy for the Trump administration. And they're, of course, concerned um, about the connections with Russia and the Trump administration or campaign because Russia supports Assad in Syria, one of their arch enemies. So, so and neighbor. The, and neighbor, yes. Yeah. And so, so there's a lot of concern and worried about the predictability, strategy, consistency. I'm not sure what adjective I'm looking for here, but certainly concerned about trying to discern some purpose out of the Trump administration and what it's doing, including the firing of Comey. All right. L let me ask you from a legal perspective, because you are a law professor, what are some of your thoughts uh, immediately about the Comey firing and some of the issues that have emerged since he was fired? Well, clearly there's some contextual issues here that right off the bat, you know, Trump has sort of first said that he fired him because he was not happy with what he was doing, uh, didn't like the way he was handling the, the Clinton emails. Well, he could have done that, you know, way back on January 20th when he took office. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is that Oftentimes in criminal law, you have to look at context and circumstance. And here we have Comey apparently having made a request for increased funding to do the, in the Russian connection investigation. Um, there seems to be um, an investigation that's moving further and further in terms of looking to a variety of people, such as you know um, Flynn, um, his one former national security advisor, advisor, who had to resign. Right. One possibility is, and not, is, is that if. Trump, in fact, fired Comey to try to halt or short circuit the Russian investigation. This sort of fits the classic definition of obstruction of justice, efforts to try to interfere with an ongoing federal criminal investigation. And I hate to sort of draw parallels back to Watergate, uh, but, but there's a parallel here in terms of a president trying to obstruct a criminal investigation that could very well involve him. Although we are not there yet of course in, not. In, in any way, but, uh, and the president is saying that the reason he fired, although there have been some different sort of nuances. Right versions right. here is because of the way he handled the Clinton investigation. Even Senator Ted Cruz said it would be a lot cleaner right. if we had done this, if he had done this in January or the first day he was in office. Uh, and the Republican uh, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee is saying the same thing, Senator well, Burr. Right. And also the fact is that we might recall that during the campaign, at one point, Trump praised Comey um, for having lots of guts for having reopened the investigation, you know, that like 10 days right. before the election. And so it almost seems as if Trump's own statements in the past about Comey contradict what he's doing now. And in fact, that's the bigger problem here beyond the legal issue here. It's the incredible confusion that's occurring in the Trump administration where no one's speaking with a consistent voice and they're all over the place. And politically now for the Republicans, this becomes a problem because the Trump agenda is completely, uh, let's say, sidetracked or derailed. And the and this is self-inflicted in terms it's of all, the unpredictability. Exactly. It's all self-inflicted. So anything that he says he wants to do, yeah. he can't yeah. move on. And I think it is important though to say that, that uh, President Trump remains incredibly popular with Republicans. 84% approve of right. his handling of the Comey matter. Let me ask you about the legislature. Right. We have a picture here from House Speaker Kurt Dowd's Twitter feed, which shows the governor in the middle of House Speaker Kurt Dowd and Senator uh, Paul Gazelka, the majority right. leader. They look really happy. They right. look like they're having a great time. There's a week left. The president, or the governor, rather, just vetoed all the budget bills. Can they make this work? Are they going to ma make this deadline of next week? It's going to be very hard to do so. The state's budget is composed of 10 bills at this point. The governor vetoed five of them. Five of them have at his desk yet. To use the analogy, I'm a professor. If my students turned in zero out of 10 items on a quiz, I know what the grade would be at that point. You know, it's, it's an F at that point. With one week to go, they are very, very far apart. I would be surprised at all if they reach, reach it by the, um, by the constitutional deadline. The real question now becomes, is there enough momentum there to do anything to be able to get this done before July 1st to avert another government shutdown? And I see both the governor, very, very popular, and the Republicans making the argument that they have mandates and they're going to sort of, I think, dig in for quite a while. So I doubt doubt by a week from Monday we're going to see resolution of this matter. All right, and you're saying possibly we could have a government shutdown. It's right now. And it's rolling, July 1st. Right, it's rolling in that direction again. And even if it's closer to July 1st, it still poses problems okay. for local governments and school districts that don't know the certainty of their funding. All right, absolutely. Well, Professor David Schultz, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. Okay.